let's take the matrix A as some kind of operator, okay? Um, let's try to draw a circle. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, and we're going to draw a vector here and a vector there. Pretend that's straight. Let's label these. This is V1, this is V2. Let's operate on these V1, V2. So let's say I take A and I operate on these vectors, V1 and V2. I'll end up with something like this. That's an ellipse. Let's pretend it's centered well, but it's an ellipse and you have the major axis here and the minor axis there. And what are the values of these uh, vectors here in the ellipse? This one is going to be sigma 1 u1, and this one's going to be sigma 2 u2. Okay, so what just happened? Well, we took, let's draw it, um, let's write it down here. A times v1 gave us sigma 1 u1. A operating on v2 gave us sigma 2 u2. Note that I was consistent and with the larger principal axis here, I gave it sigma 1. We said the higher, the sigma 1 is the highest singular value, so that's why it stretches that vector v1 more. And what did we do is we basically stretched and rotated um, each of these vectors. Let's, um, so that's cool. We have some vector, multiply, some matrix multiplies a vector, gives us a scalar times a vector. Does that sound kind of familiar? Maybe we're thinking already like eigenvalues, huh? But this is a little bit different, but it's related. Let's uh, look at this a little more. So let's say A times VI is equal to sigma I times UI. Okay, I being the index of whatever component you care about. In matrix form, you can write this as AV is equal to U times sigma, where along sigma is all these diagonals. Uh, along the diagonal of sigma, is all those singular values, these sigma i's. And what we get from here, very simply, by right multiplying by v transpose, is we get a equals u sigma v transpose. Now, again, we're assuming that these v's are some, uh, you know, basis where v, v times v transpose is possible. We're assuming v is unitary here. Okay, these are not just some random vectors. They have to kind of have the, the property that stacked into a matrix, they become a unitary uh, matrix. But now this is how we've gotten to our SVD, the expression we've shown. Another thing to keep in mind is this can be written, you know, we have, this can be written, this same A can be written as a sum of rank one matrices. Okay, let's just write this down. We're gonna get to this a little bit later, but the rank one matrices are the outer product of each U and V vector. Just, we're just going to keep it here for now. And we'll leave the summation a little bit ambiguous because it kind of depends on the rank, right? But um, let's say from i equals 1 to r, um, r being the rank. After that, the sigma i's are 0. We don't care anymore. But the fact that it's a sum of rank 1 matrices, that's pretty cool. The, the matrix A can be composed by just adding together rank 1 matrices. That may be useful to us later, it will be.